starting a little early today because my buddy Rob always wants to complain about me being a uh, being a couple of minutes late. So first things first. Oh no. Uh, we're doing a uh, Gurkha Park Avenue again. The, the band came off when I took it out of the wrapper, but damn, these are good cigars. If you've not had a Gurkha Park Avenue, you need to get one. Okay, so got a got a bit of a show lined up today. There's a few really good topics um, that uh, I I really just feel like discussing. Um, uh, first and foremost, this one is for Hub City Outdoors. The TT33 Talkarev is not a 1911. Stop it. It's not funny. It's not a cheap copy of a 1911. It's a cheap copy of an FN 1903. Get it right. So, all right, we got a few people in here. I see four, but it only tells me two. That makes me a little sad. But that's okay. I still love you all. So, one of the, the, the first topics that I got that I wanted to talk about was uh, the M9 versus the M45. Now, I'm assuming this individual meant the M45A1 CQBP, Close Quarters Combat Pistol from, uh, or Close Quarters Battle Pistol from Colt. Um, but there was another one. There was the M45 Musoc, which is my dream 1911. I've wanted one for, since I knew what they were. Mostly because, you know, 1911 with some military history. And partly because I actually did deploy on a Mew and we were SOC qualified. At least as far as I remember. So, having a MUSOC would be really cool. But, at the same time, when I was on this MU, I was issued an M9. So, And I, I absolutely adore the Berettas as well. So this was actually kind of a really tough question for me. Um, which would I rather? And it's, it's a tough choice. If we're talking out of the armory as it would have been handed to me, so no no LTT or, or Wilson Combat or any fanciness, just M9 out of the armory versus uh, an, an M45 MUSOC, there's, there's no competition. It's the MUSOC, if I get to choose. That's the real answer, is I'm going to take what the armory gives me. A lot of people think, you know, that they just hand pistols out like candy on Halloween. No, they don't. It, uh, having a pistol in the military is actually a bit of a pain in the ass. Hey man, what's going on? You know. You know about pistols in the military. So, you, you know, the, uh, the M45s, if, if I'm understanding it correctly, it started as a, as a, competition like the military likes to do because their 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 M1911 A1s were getting a little long in the tooth come the 80s cuz they hadn't taken a delivery of new ones since the 50s. So yeah, the, these these guns were getting beat up. They were they were all already uh 
you know, rebuilt a couple of times and your your special dudes, at least, you know, in the Marine Corps, this would be uh it it's they still weren't handing them out to everybody on a Mew. It was mostly for the for the Marine Force Recon guys. Um they wanted something better. They wanted their 1911. They just wanted it better. Uh, just driving back from the USMC rifle and pit bay. Hey, hey, you know, funny that we're talking about it. But, um, so there, there was a few companies that joined. I forget all of them, to be honest, but Springfield was, was one of them. And the Marine Corps actually liked Springfield's version the best. But they didn't adopt it. They realized they could do it themselves at the Precision Weapons Section in Quantico. And that's exactly what they did is, again, don't take this as fact. Please, if someone knows more, fact check me. I'm stating this as I understand it. Um... The, the Marine Corps took Springfield's entry and copied it. So that's, that's how I have come to understand it. But it's, it's a fantastic pistol. And Springfield wasn't the only one, or wasn't just doing guns for the Marine Corps. They uh, are trying to get a contract with the Marine Corps. They were building the... Uh, the 1911s for Delta. Um, Black Hawk Down, all the 1911s there were built by Springfield. Or tuned the F up by Springfield's custom shop. Got to nip just a little more off of that. There we go. Okay. So that's kind of where the where the Musoc fits in. And it would be used up until... They were using these up until the early 2000s, early GWAT. Um, and then other ones came on came into play, like the, uh, the Kimber Interim Close Quarters Battle Pistol, or ICQB. Which is like a moon rock finding a you know some some vickers there. I think he's actually used that talking about this particular gun, but a uh, 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 a real Kimber IC ICQB pistol is it, it is not easy to find one. Uh, you've got a 1911 Springfield 1911 A2. What's what's the A2? Come on, man. You know these. You know these type designations matter. <laughs> um, I've got two. I've I've got my Marine Corps operator from Springfield, which, in a way, is kind of like a sixth generation Musoc. Um, in a way, yes and no, kind of, sort of, but not really. You get the idea. Uh, my other one, which I'm carrying today, outside the waistband, because if we can, we do, is my nothing special mil spec. Don't don't do the don't do this. That's bad. It's the World War II remake. Okay, so an A1. What you're telling me is you got one of these. Oops, it easy. Sig V Crown. Don't uh, don't knock it. It's actually pretty decent stuff. Two hundred and thirty grains of ruin someone's day. So the uh, yeah the the Springfields are fantastic guns. Um, I don't care what people say. Springfield doesn't do a lot right, but boy howdy did they get nineteen elevens right. So, we've talked a bit about the M45 MUSOC. 
again, I, I'm pretty sure the guy meant the uh, the M45A1 from Colt, but I don't care about that because I wanted to talk about a MUSOC. Um, we'll, we'll talk about the M45A1 in, in a little bit. Versus an M9, which... Let's, let's, you know what, let's say it's the late 80s. The M9s are still fairly new, so they don't have a lot of the, you know, there, there's some, some complaints, but not nearly what GWAT guys were complaining about. Um, when the M9 was adopted, people that went to qualify, like expert qualifications on the pistol ranges shot up because... The, nine, the M9 was so much easier to handle than a 1911. Um, that is, that's like recorded historic fact. Having shot an M9 and a 1911, I guess I don't really understand because you've got that double action trigger pull, which to someone not used to it will kind of throw them off. But you've got the heavy recoil of a, of a 45, especially an old one that hasn't had a new recoil spring in like 30 years because the military doesn't know how to change recoil springs, which is why they got rid of the M9, which was stupid. We want something better. No, you need to take care of what you have. (coughs) So, I... Honestly, like if I walked up to the armory and they said you could have either one, I would have a really hard time deciding. But I think ultimately I would come down on the uh on the Musoc because they're amazing. They are just awesome guns. Eventually this Springfield I just showed you is gonna go to Valor Precision and become a Musoc clone clone the markings won't be right but it'll be close enough for my purposes uh did shooting doctrine change as well i have no idea the only changes i'm aware of for the pistol qual are relatively recent within the last few years um i don't know how long they were doing the old qual that you and i knew when we were in um but at the same time, the Marines were given the the program. They were in charge of the program that ultimately gave us the M16A2. And, you know, what did they do? They tailored the rifle to their qualification course of fire. They didn't adapt the course of fire to the to the rifle they adapted the rifle to the to the qual so you know as much as i love the m16a2 i'm gonna call it what it is it's a target rifle uh shooting doctrine change other than manual arm manual of arms i don't think they really changed much um i don't think the qual changed i don't think how people were trained with pistols or better better yet the lack of training with pistols i don't think really anything they just said you know hey we got these send some guys to a class that's it kind of kind of like when the m27s came in send a few guys to a class so and i i Love the M9s, don't get me wrong. Um, I just like 1911s more, because, I don't know, they, they they fit good, I can handle the recoil, because I'm a big, beefy guy, and, you know, especially, especially, hold on, when we're talking about military ammunition, which is ball, I am going to pick a 45 over a 9 mil because again when we're talking military you don't get to put modern hollow points in there you get the ball 9 mil nato that you're issued which 9 mil nato is loaded much closer to a european 
spec then it would be to like if you went and got 124 grain 9 mil off the shelf at Bass Pro it's 9 NATO is close to a plus P plus loading which no gun can survive a steady diet of that was one of the big problems with the M9 is they're shooting that crap through it which is completely unnecessary um, so I would, I would again choose the 45 because if we're talking full metal jacket, just straight ball ammunition, I have more faith in 45 dropping somebody than I do nine mil. Modern hollow points for civilian concealed carry. That's a different story. But we talked about that in the 1911 episode, which is available on YouTube if you want to watch it. So, you know, am, am, am I a FUD for choosing a 45 over a 9? Well, a lot of people probably think so, but, you know, no one trusted 9 when ball was the only thing available. So, whatever. Um, another, so, um, before we truly move on. The M45A1 from Colt was a headache, historically. I have yet to actually handle one. And honestly, for what Colt wants for them, I'm probably not going to handle one because I'm certainly not going to pay that money for what I've seen in other reviews as far as their quality goes. It doesn't seem... Like, it's all there. One of the big reasons that... Because Marine Force Recon got it. I believe Marsoc had them. And they quickly went to... I believe it was Glock 19s. And part of the reason for that was actually uh, competitions. Or I guess there's these, like, Special Forces competitions or whatever. I don't know. Because, you know, they don't have wars to train for or whatever. But... Um, they're they're trying to compete against like Glock 17s or or whatever, and they just they literally just couldn't keep up, you know. For for every one mag these other guys would use, you know, these guys are having to start to load their third mag by the time those guys are about to reload for the first time. So yeah, they just they just couldn't keep up because it doesn't matter how fast and accurate you shoot. Your your reloads matter, and yeah, you know, there's yeah, it's Glocks. Just worked with them a few months ago, and that's the thing. Yeah, I mean, most most of the guys were were adopting Glocks, and then uh, even in an unofficial capacity, and then the M17 and M18 came along, and. I don't think anyone actually really wanted it. <laughs> um, it seems like a lot of guys, are st a lot of units like that are still using Glocks. So, I mean, what do I know? I, I was just a corporal. <laughs> Sat in a truck. <laughs> Wolfie saw me sitting in a truck. You know what I did. <laughs> so... So there's that. The the M45A1 had a bunch of problems. I'm not denying it's a cool gun. I mean, I'd love to own one, but I ain't paying Colt prices for it. So, you know, there's that. Uh, the other topic that... Uh, pardon me that was brought up was uh, people wanted me to talk more about my, my general purpose build, which I didn't bring out here. Um, mostly because I can't get far enough away from the camera to show the whole thing. It's, it's in my feed near the top, so... Um, that is a stubborn piece of tobacco. USMC Command wasn't happy. USMC Command is never happy. You could do literally everything right, and they'll be pissed off at you for it. Um, I, I've handled an M18, and it's not awful, but 
side by side with a Glock, I don't think there's any comparison between them. The the Glock is the superior gun. Every day of the week and twice on Sunday. The Okay, so I guess we're talking about the uh the XM seventeen program now. Um I don't think it should have ever happened. I think that the military should have taken Beretta up on its offer for the M9A3 and the M9A2 program, which basically what that was was they would take existing M9s and bring them up to the spec of the Marine Corps' M9A1s to supplement the M9A3. If you want detail on that, go to Small Arms Solutions on YouTube. Just just go to YouTube, search Small Arms Solutions Beretta, and grab yourself some snacks. You're going to be there a while. It, fantastic information. Um, so, so there's that. Uh, that's actually where I'm drawing a lot of my information from. And so the XM-17 program should have never happened, in my opinion. And I, I agree with Chris at Small Arms Solutions. The only reason to adopt a new pistol would be if they're changing the caliber. Because the M9 was a fantastic sidearm. If it was taken care of. Now when it's 30 years old, goodness knows how many rounds have been put through it. And the only maintenance that's ever been done to it is cleaning. Why got no work? Cleaning is part of maintenance, but it is not all of maintenance. The military would have you believe otherwise, and the military is stupid for it. I said what I said. I'm not taking it back. So, there's that. We The, the standard sidearm right now should be the M9A3, in my opinion. But we're moving on with the XM-17 program. Now, what I understand is that neither the Glock 19X or the P320 went through the entire endurance test. This is, again, information that I have gotten from Small Arms Solutions. It's not to say that one's better than the other. You know, they, they weren't tested. And that's not to say they weren't tested, but they were tested nowhere near as thoroughly as the Beretta 92FS versus the Sig Sauer P226. Those two guns were judged to be equal after testing. So what did the military do? They had them do it again. The, the Beretta and the Sig each went through the endurance test twice in 1984, I think it was. And where Beretta won was because they came out equal again. And where Beretta won this contest was they ever so slightly undercut SIG on the price of spare parts and magazines. And when I say undercut slightly, I mean I've yet to see like a document, but that that states it but i'm i'm thinking we're almost talking like single digit dollar amounts like it was close and then a little more history we're just going to keep going <laughs> um they had the issues of navy seals testing the beretta and the slide separated broken half and hit a dude in the eye and everyone blamed beretta the problem was 9 mil NATO being loaded in the U.S. It was, they used the correct powder charge, but they were using, com using commercial cases, which had less space inside and generated more pressure. So how this worked out was you, you are beyond, people will say, oh, they were using submachine gun ammo. No, they were using ammunition that generated pressure that was close to proof cartridge pressure. And they were doing mag dumps. You know, say what you will about the SEALs. They get a high volume of fire training. 
the ex the same problem happened with the SIGs, which because they were like, well, the Beretta's trash because this happened. Okay. And so they went with the 226, which became the Mark 25. Those had problems too, but instead of the slide cracking, the frame cracked. So there's that. We're going to get back to the XM17. I just... That fit, I wanted to throw it in there. If you want more of the history of the XM9 program, Small Arms Solutions on YouTube. Um, the... So, so, putting even putting the XM17 program aside, taking, not even shooting, just taking a P320 and a Glock 19X, holding them side by side, the Glock is the superior gun, in my opinion. The people will talk about, oh, Glock's ergonomics and... You know, just like anything else with a handgun, you can train through it. Don't come at me with their grip angle. I don't care. <sighs> um, the SIG, admittedly, as you pick it up, is more comfortable, but its bore axis is ridiculous. This is simple, just physics. It's going to have more muzzle rise than the Glock is because it sits higher. You are not getting around it. Don't argue with it. If you do, you're silly. Got to run. I'll check the recap out on the general purpose rifle details. Oh, sorry about that. I, I got on a tangent there. We're, you know, we will get to the general purpose rifle in due time. Um, so I just I I think the the nineteen X should have been the M seventeen. End of story. <laughs> That's where I'm at on that. And and before anyone says it, I like SIG. I really do. But I still think the Glock 19X should have been the M17. Like, just end of story. So. Hey, Bobo's here. I started early today just for you. You took your sweet time getting here. Ugh. Has anyone got anything like they want to ask before I start talking about the general purpose rifle that I didn't bring out here with me? I'm more or less just soliciting that so I can, you know, keep the cigar going. No? All right. Well, my general purpose rifle. Honestly, this gun started off as based on a combination of Garand Thumb and T Rex Arms videos. It's an arrow precision lower with a BCM M lock upper, 14 and a half inch barrel with a Surefire War Comp pinned and welded. It is. I called it the boring gun for a long time for a reason. Those of you that, you know, pay attention to my posts will notice that recently it became significantly less boring. Um, yeah, so there's that. There, There's the majority of the build right there. I used uh, a Brownells lower parts kit and a, uh, a Geisley SSAE trigger um which is that trigger is just money i love that thing i i personally do think it's worth the price um lower parts are lower parts in my opinion so you know ordered through brownells got the house brand and you know saved a little bit of money speaking of which sneaky commercial Brownells, any order over $150 or more, save yourself 10% by using code PIPEGUY10. So I'll just leave that there. Y'all go spend money at Brownells now. I promise I'm trying not to spam that, but I'm still going to mention it. 
so there's that. Um, and the, the, the first set of optics I tried for this was uh, Scalarworks Leaf Fixed Irons, which are, which are nice. They're really nice irons. And a Trigicon MRO on a Scalarworks Lower One Third Mount. And it worked. You know, it wasn't bad. No, no, that's not true. I had a Vortex Viper PST on there. Uh, low power variable. It was 1 to 4. Had tall turrets, which I didn't particularly like, but I got the scope cheap, so. And that that just wasn't doing it for me. Then I went to the uh, to the MRO and the big scalar works order. It was okay. It worked. It wasn't quite what I wanted, so... I ended up selling that and just running irons for a while until I could afford an Aimpoint Pro. Um, oh, and I was running a uh, a Streamlight ProTac HLX, I think it was. I don't know. They're, just, they're rifle light. It was like 150 bucks on Amazon. Um, and with uh, it had the uh, the Arasaka offset mount, so everything's like nice and tight and clean up front there. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, and I mean, the gun the gun, just works fine. It's fantastic. Uh, I got bored one day, so I ordered some Alumahide from Brownells in uh, Coyote and OD Green. And before anyone says it, yeah, I bought a lot of the parts for this gun, almost the entire thing from Brownells. So you're going to hear that name a lot, and if that's a problem, uh, the Aimpoint Pro was awesome. I really liked that. Uh, take it easy, man. Semper Fi, Yut, Ra, Kill, all that jazz. Drive safe. What what was bothering me with this gun was the fixed sights. That I just I didn't like that it was in the way. The front sight, sure, whatever, you know, deal with it. We used ACOGs in the core with fixed front sight posts. It's not a big deal. The rear sight is what was bothering me because I use the old Marine Corps nose to charging handle. It just works for me because large. And having that rear sight there was just bothersome. So I, I decided I wanted flip-ups. And I, I'll be honest, I never really considered anything besides Knight's Armament flip-ups. I, I wanted the CAC. Um, and, you know, those are like unobtainium. So it wasn't until relatively recently I got... Uh, it was earlier this year... I got myself an ACOG for a different rifle. And, you know, I just kind of playing with stuff. And then it occurred to me, putting the ACOG on the boring gun. But that's not going to work with that fixed rear sight. So now I have to get a folding sight. And it needs to be a nice low profile. So we're just kind of reinforcing the decision to use Knight's Armament. Um... During this time of messing around with stuff, I also upgraded from Streamlight to Surefire, which I should have just got a Surefire to begin with. But money and, you know, children, I don't have money, so. Um, oh, I got an ACOG. Oh, I don't have any money. Oh, I wonder why. Um... But I, I came into an RMR with an RM35 mount, and I decided when that gets here, we're taking the Pro off of the boring gun, putting the ACOG on it, putting that RMR on it. We're doing the piggyback RMR, and it's going to be amazing. And then, a pair of Knight's Armament folding sights just kind of fell into my lap. A very dear friend... Angel of Verdun, go follow her if you're not already. She 
had a pair for sale, and I was like, what do you want for them? I'm not going to tell you what I paid for them. But um, it was less than retail, we'll put it that way. She she gave me a great deal on those. So I have the sites that I wanted. And the finished product is what you see on, on my feed. It's just... In my in my opinion, it's a good do all rifle. Like all retro drip aside, you know, it's not as cool as Paul Reislaufer's tube Delta carbine. It's not you know a poor man's four sixteen or anything. Arms ain't gonna have an easy time fitting under an ACOG, Paul. I just said something nice. Stop it. So, you know, it's, it's just, it took a while to put this together. I've been working on this thing since 2019. It's gone through three different optics, two sets of firing sights, three flashlights. And I finally got it where I want it. The only thing I don't have for it that I really want is a suppressor. And because it's a pinned and welded war comp, I'm kind of married to Surefire in this case. But that's okay, because... They're not the quietest. They're not, you know, they don't, they're not perfect at any one thing they do, but surefire suppressors seem to be really, really good at a lot of things they do. So I I do eventually plan to get an RC2 for this whenever I, you know, get around to it. Um, and uh, that's, I mean, that's pretty much it. I still gotta, I gotta take it out and zero it and, I'm going to have three sets of sights to zero now, but that's okay. Um, eventually we'll get that surefire, and that's that. So, you know, now you feel bad. Well, you know, I, I, didn't, I don't mean to make you feel bad, but i gotta, I got to defend myself, Paul. So your, your tube Delta build is pretty rad, though. I love that gun. I'm too lazy to, to do one on my own, but that'd be a that'd be a cool one to have. Hey brown cow. Uh oh, this is what else I was gonna say is another person brought up a uh, a good point, discussed the superiority of twenty inch rifles. And it's like this is known. Now my general purpose rifle is not a twenty inch, it's a it's a fourteen and a half. But it's general purpose. I've got a, uh, a Colt 6933 upper, which is an 11 and a half inch. That's a, a niche gun. A 20 inch 20 inch has all the velocity. Um, and it's fantastic. People will say, no, you need a Mark 18 to do CQB and... Uh, Paul specifically, he's heard this enough times. Homie, I learned CQB on an A4. You can absolutely do it. How do you think how do you think the Marines took Fallujah? Because <laughs> they didn't have Mark 18s. <coughs> so 20 inches are great. I ran mine at Cornfield Brutality and loved it. I still love it. Um and if I keep talking about this, I'm going to end up spending a bunch of money on a, on a Knight's Rail and another ACOG. And uh, it'll just get really expensive really fast. But I love my 20-inch. I just didn't... Shoot, I figured that 14 and a half was the best compromise in ballistics and you know maneuverability and aesthetics. Uh, when I was building my general purpose rifle. Um, for open field, you know, 20 inches is still the way to go. I don't care what HK says. Uh, creeping up on 32, 62 green. That's cool. I just know 
20 inch make bullet go fast. Send me an upper and a tube and I'll do it. Dude, I've got too much stuff going on. I can't just be getting another upper and a tube. Oh, that's another thing about the general purpose rifle. It's uh it's a mid length gas. So thirteen, seven, fourteen, whatever pinned and welded, that's that's what mine is. It's a fourteen and a half inch pinned and welded with a mid length gas system and it is smooth. The only thing smoother that I've shot is your full length fixed stock twenty inch rifles. Um they're still my favorite. And I wouldn't have I wouldn't have any qualms at all about, you know, real life scenario using an iron sighted twenty inch AR. So there's that. <sighs> what else do we got? Anything new and exciting? We want to keep talking handguns, talk more rifles. What do we want to do? We still got some time. Probably about another uh, 20-ish minutes before it cuts me off. DMR 20 inch needs to, you know, DMR 20 inch. That reminds me of something. Everybody loves the Mark 12, but we need more resources to clone the Marine Corps Sam R, which is like the Mark 12's older cousin. <laughs> Those things were awesome, and I want one, but cloning one's a pain in the ass. You're finally moving. I'm. I'm not moving. I'm sitting right. I'm sitting in my chair. Not getting out of this chair. You have Mark Twelve at home. What is it? A, a twenty-inch DPMS with a Tasco on it. Is that the Mark Twelve at home? My my goal here for the uh, for this sixty nine thirty three that I've got is um, what the Mark eighteen should have been, and that's going to make a lot of boys really angry. <laughs> I didn't call you out, Paul. You called you out by bringing it up. So, so there's that. I need to mess around my M14 more. That gun doesn't get enough love. But whenever I post it on here, y'all love to hate it. And that just drives the algorithm for me. Please continue hating my, my M14. This is a uh, the same as last week, a Gurkha Park Avenue, which might be one of my favorite cigars. They just nice and light, great for... Chewing a fat with the internet on a Sunday afternoon. I hate to love the M14 too, but it's the only thing more polarizing than that is how much the internet loves to hate it. At least it's not a Springfield. Like I like I said in the beginning, you know, there's a lot of stuff Springfield don't do right, but they got 1911s right. I need to get some dissident cigars. I uh, I tried those while I was at GunCon, and they are great. I just need to get around to putting an order in. Romeo and Juliet's ain't bad. I'm uh, I like my Gurkhas. I like Nub, obviously. 
uh, Macanudos now and then I really like, but uh, most of the time when I go in the cigar shop, I grab one or two of the ones I know I want, and then I just pick based on what has a cool looking band. So I'm always trying, you know, new stuff as far as that goes. I remember I was stationed in Camp Lejeune. There's this place called Tobacco Country um, outside, uh, yeah, it's just out in town. And I, they had these, these tins is by, by Yay Big, uh, Zeno, which was, uh, an off brand of Davidoff. And they had 13 torpedo cigars in the, in the tin. And not only were they a great smoke, but having this tin, you know, pop the lid and you pull one it was very aesthetically pleasing i wish i could find those again but that's the only place i ever seen them i gotta i gotta put a big order in here soon um you know, the, uh, the dissident cigars, I need to freshen up my supply of pipe tobacco, and I need to get this year's, uh, 7 LA St. Nicholas. This will be my seventh year running with that. I need to get something to take to Clash Bash. Dude, see if you can find some Park Avenues. They're really good. Oh, I was gonna say something. What was it? Oh, yep. Yeah. I don't know what that is. But since uh since we're like two weeks out now, I can No I never said I couldn't, but uh I can announce it, you know, here. Um for those of you that are aware, Iraq Veteran eighty eight eighty eight has a uh a shoot every year that's invite only. And whilst at GunCon, I managed to get myself an invitation. So in two weeks, I'm going down to Georgia. I don't know if we're going to do a Sunday Smokes while I'm there. But uh, I, I'm going to try to. Which would be great, because it'd probably just be like five minutes of me staring at you while there's machine guns and whatnot going off. That'd be great, but... It's a scotch, and they do a release called a cigar. That's delicious. Okay. All right. I I enjoy scotch, like uh, you know, I said in the story. But um, I scotch is expensive, so I pretty much just stick with Lagavulin and don't you know try new things because I'd hate to spend that much money on something I didn't like. But yeah, um, gonna go down there. Uh, I'm using it as a network opportunity, try to grow my page and all that, but I'm also fully planning to sh shoot some machine guns because it's been a minute for me. Uh, while it was very cool, the five rounds of an MP7 at GunCon, or they didn't quite scratch the itch enough, so... I need, uh, I need to go find myself something... Feeds from a belt. Uh, Kentucky Gentleman Bourbon Gang. Oh, oh no. The other day I just... I, 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 don't, I don't drink a whole lot anymore, but the other day I just kind of grabbed a bottle of Basil Hayden off the shelf and had a healthy snort straight from the bottle. And I, I still got it. I can still do that, so... I do enjoy a good bourbon, but... Man, a good glass of scotch, especially an Isla scotch. Yeah, you, know, you got yourself a, uh, you got yourself a campfire in a glass. It's fantastic. PBS forty three. I believe it. Y'all silly billies and your Kalashnikovs.
we in AR country around here. Nothing against Team Team Kalash. I uh, I own one, but it's pretty much just to say that I own one. You're in bourbon country. All right. I mean, hey, that's fair. I I used to drink a disturbing amount of Jim Beam, so yeah, no stranger to bourbon. I almost brought a drink out here that, you know, wasn't a Dr. Pepper, but I also have a handgun on me, so, yeah, I gotta, I gotta at least appear somewhat responsible, but it would have been a, it would have been a Jenny, because life's 10 out of 10 when you're drinking a Jenny. One on one FS for KB, so at least I'm fine. Got okay. Your Saiga one on one FS. So what you're telling me is that neither Kalash Gang or AR Gang likes you. <laughs> Someone's beating on something in there. And yes, change of scenery. I'm sitting next to my kitchen now. Mostly so uh, you guys didn't have to deal with the appearingly white background because of the the light difference or whatever. Cameras are stupid. You're the stepchild. Yeah, I believe that. So I go 101 I thought that I, I'm I don't know man I don't get like it's it's neat you know all the different variations of the AK and the different names and all that you know what makes it a whatever versus you know uh, this when it's all just an AKM, but uh, I I have like a passing interest. It's cool to flip through a coffee table book about or watch a ten minute video on YouTube, but I don't get super deep into the differences because AKs are neat. And that's about as far as my interest goes. <laughs> Digging in the weeds, isn't that what like AK people do? Yeah, that's the trade off is there's no super crazy contrast with light in this new spot, but you occasionally get a cameo from my kid. Some try to dig way too much, that's a fact. Or, you know, pay silly amounts of money for a plastic magazine that is objectively not that great. I spent $12 on a black P-Mag. We are not the same. It's gun. Put the thing on the thing. Pull the thing. That sounds like overhandling, man. You are overhandling. All right. We've kind of devolved to nonsense at this point. We. On the flip side, I'll pay dumb money for A1 part. Yeah, yeah, guilty. Actually, no, I'm not guilty. I bought my A1. My A1 is a uh, Brownells, so. One and done. Um, the silliest I got with, you know, the retro ARs was um, I bought an extra 20-round waffle mag for 
my wife's uh, 601, which that 601 is, it's so cool. But yeah, we, we are 100% not the same. Um, you're definitely not me on another account, just kind of typing off to the side so that somebody is watching this. <laughs> But that's, uh, we're, we're getting to be about there where I got to wrap it up before it cuts me off. So I appreciate everyone coming and watching this rambling nonsense. I'm just like always going to post it. And, uh, that's about that. Unless, you know, there's any last minute things. Damn, that is lucky. And uh, you know, one of one of my builds used uh, Brown L's A1 lower as well. It's it's kind of cool to have that two tone going on there. Um, my my first M16 was a two tone because all the anodizing had come off the lower, but the upper was like brand new. It was weird. But uh, yeah, I think that's it. Hey, you take care too, buddy. Uh, I think we're gonna wrap this up before it cuts me off, and uh, I'll catch y'all next week. You know, maybe we'll be be a little more exciting next week. So, y'all take it easy. Enjoy your Sunday. And uh, that's that.